Okay, if you're one of those people who's had knee surgery and you're getting pain in a single leg squat in the front of your knee, like where you feel like the portals have been, then I've got two exercises for you to work on to try and bypass that, get it stronger, and bring you back to that single leg squat. What you'll need is something like a suspension trainer, like a TRX like that, attached high, and maybe something like a sliding disc. We'll go through that later. But first up, the single leg squat, or say a step down like this. If you're having pain with that, meaning under here, sort of telofemoral pain and weakness, and you can't get past it. Now we've got a couple of patients that are like that, it's post-surgical, that are struggling with trying to go into that movement. They get a bit stuck, all right, and they just can't do it. They're doing lots of other exercises to help the strength, but a lot of it's psychological, not neuromuscular, meaning they, when they get down the point, the message about pain and weakness triggers them to sort of stop, and they can't get past it. And sometimes the pain is too much for people. Others are just that weak, they just can't do it. So if you imagine what we're going to try and do is unload them, make them lighter so it's relatively the knee is stronger for what they're doing. The moment, if you've dropped strength in the tissues and you're weak in your quads and your glutes and your control's not great, you're not going to have the strength to go fully down into a squat. It's going to be too painful. So we're going to try and change that. So what we do is get rid of that box. Is we use something like a TRX, any suspension trainer like this, to try and unload us. Now what this does is it allows me to put weight, or I like to call weight, through this by pulling, which unloads me through the knee. So what I mean by, if this is my surgical knee, what I can do is then hold onto this, which is the first thing it's gonna do is take away the balance factor. So if I've got a balance issue, I can take that away. Then what I can do is go through my squat, but hold on here, so I'm not putting as much weight through my knee. So I'm instantly doing a squat almost feel like I'm lighter, which means I'm relatively strong in the leg, which you can handle it. Now, the good thing about this is what we can work on is also the components of what's going wrong with that single leg squat. So with someone, someone maybe when they do a squat is they just shove their knee forward and they don't bend to the hip, so we can work on that. Others, they basically just, they, they bend forward and they, can't, and they don't want to bend their knee forward. They, they sit back but they don't want to bend their knee forward. So what we do with this is teach them once you're in that position, you've got to get the right position here. This leg still goes backwards, or forwards if you want to, but we usually go backwards with this. When you squat, we start them off actually hip hinging like that. So you're not really doing a squat. You're doing sort of like a deadlift type movement. The knee does move forward a little bit. All right? We don't want it stiff-legged, but it does move forward a little bit. But you sit backwards and learn to hinge at the knee and get deeper than what you've been doing in a single leg squat. That's the first thing. I just need more knee bending for a start. Get the confidence to drop down. What that'll do is work on their hip. Okay, they've got to work on glutes and hamstrings to try and get that hip extension part, right? And having this, like I said before, having this keeps them balanced. So they're going to be nice and straight with their knee. Okay, they're not going to let it roll in too much. So that's your first part. Once you get more confident with that, you can rely less on the straps, but also you can start working on the actual squat base. So before they're just doing this, okay, then you can go, okay, now I need you to get that knee going forward a little bit more, so you're turning it into more of a squat. Because they're getting used to bending the hips, they're getting stronger through here, which gives them the load capability, and they just got to get through there. Now, as they go, their knee goes forward, they need to work on how much load they put through here. And as they get better, the trick is more load through the knee or the leg, less load through the strap. So they're going to rely less and less and less on this. And that may happen over weeks and weeks and weeks where they're putting way more load through their leg. They're still holding on, but they're barely holding on. It's more of a confidence thing. And like I said, this, some of this is neuromuscular, so the confidence issue is quite important. And if you can use that and they're basically fully weight bearing, then great. That'll get them closer to being able to do it by themselves without the assistance of that because that's really really helpful for them to use you just got to make sure that you know initially they're not just shoving their knee forward and getting nowhere they have to start with a hip hinge then they move into a squat and as they move into a squat keep them more upright so that's a really good one to work on second thing is actually shifting your weight laterally and keeping a foot in contact with the ground so before when you do a single leg squat either whether it's going forward or a step down where it's going backwards, you have to shift your upper body weight forward or back, okay, to counteract. And what that does is it means you have to sort of balance a little bit more, and you have to rely on the knee to help you control that. With this, if you go sideways, you won't have to do that. So there's two things. 
One, I don't have to worry about my body weight going forward or back. I just stay centered when I do that. But also, this contact on the ground takes away the balance issue again. So before, if my knee was going to sort of waver in, if I was doing a single squat and I was just trying to waver in, that's because I haven't got my other leg on the ground a lot of the time. So if I've got this on a disc, remember though, this is only about 20%, but I've got some weight through there, then my balance is pretty good. Okay, And you can start off with the same, same sort of rules. When you slide out and you squat, start off with a hip hinge first. Okay, So sit backwards, get that hip working harder, because that's gonna, you need that to control the knee. If I take that leg away, then the knee starts wavering. So I need my hip control here. You just gotta grade how much weight do you put through this. And they, you know, they can put through as much as they want, but you're aiming to be as little as possible as you go. Just like with the TRX, as little on this as you need, as little on this as you need. So you definitely don't wanna, when you go out, then move this way, because that's gonna put weight off leg. That's the opposite of what I wanna do. I wanna keep weight on that leg, so make sure your body or your shoulder stays over your hip, your hip stays over your knee, your knee stays over your foot when you squat. You can hinge more here than you bend here, but over time, you wanna go, okay, I need to be upright here. My knee goes more forward, I still hinge the hip, and I turn it into a squat. And this leg, see it's not doing much, okay? I can lift it up, it's not doing much here. It's just giving me a bit of neuromuscular support, a little bit of load, maybe 10%, but most of it's here. All right? And that gives me the confidence and strength to load my knee. And that's what's going to get my tissues better. So then they've got a better chance of going back to this and doing this a little bit better. Because one, they build up a little bit of strength by doing this for weeks. And their confidence is better. Okay? They, they know that bending the knee is not going to hurt them. So they can do that a little bit easier. If you don't have one of these discs and you're on a floor that's polished or a tiled floor, you can just use a towel. That's easy. Um, but make sure... When you do this one, you're always keeping that weight over that leg and bringing it back, otherwise you're gonna use your groins. So hopefully, if you've got problems like that post-surgery, give these two a shot and see if that helps you get you back to your single leg squat. See you next time.